The mobile phone is an amazing piece of technology. It can text, tweet, post, map, capture, game, and probably even phone. So much technological power packed into a palm-sized package. 80 years ago, if you were to ask for a mobile phone, you'd probably get something like this. So what's happened in the last 80 years that's led us to this point? Let's start here. This is arguably the first modern computer created by Alan Turing in 1936. It was used to break the German encryption schema and help the Allies win World War II. And Turing's principles and theories inspired modern computer science as we know it, leading us to the development of this. This is the first programmable computer built in 1946 to do complex calculations. It weighed 27 tons, took up 1,800 square feet, and had a speed of 100,000 calculations per second. A couple decades later, clocking in at over 1 million calculations per second, in 1969 the Apollo 11 spacecraft was able to use a computer guidance system to safely land the first humans on the moon. A few years later, two major innovations were introduced. The first cell phone weighing in at 2.5 pounds, 30 minutes of talk time, and 10 hours of charging time, and GPS, developed to improve military location tracking. The 70s also gave us the microprocessor, taking the monolithic sized computers and making them the size of desktops, leading us to the birth of personal computers and gaming consoles, which had double the processing power of the Apollo 11 spacecraft. The 1980s saw the boom of personal computing. They became less of a business device and more of an entertainment device. We saw more and more things being integrated into standard computing systems, including video games, which pushed processing power to the max, bringing us dedicated audio and graphics cards, each with their own processors. As we cross into the 90s, computers became more personalized and interconnected as processors cross the 100 megahertz mark and the internet crosses the 100 megabits a second mark. In 1991, we see the first ever webcam at the University of Cambridge, showing if their coffee pot was empty. This happily pushed us into the new world of internet live streams. At the end of the 90s, we see this device, the PDA. It allowed people to work on the go by taking the benefits of this and making it pocket-sized. The turn of the century brought about techno panic with the Y2K bug, but that didn't stop technology from kicking it into hyperdrive. Processors jumped past the gigahertz mark and computers jumped to gigabit ethernet speeds. In the mobile space, as 3G mobile broadband made its debut, those old PDAs and cell phones could now keep people constantly connected online. It's here that things start coming together. In 2000, Qualcomm combines all this technology into the mobile space using its system-on-a-chip design, bringing together internet, GPS, Bluetooth, and MP3 capabilities all into one phone. Then a decade later, they announced the HTC Evo 4G, the first 4G-enabled smartphone running a 1 GHz Snapdragon processor. The heavily peripheral desktops of old start to see a decline as smartphones and tablets start to integrate all of their technology and then some into pocket-sized devices. Now with the continuing progress of Snapdragon processors, we've crossed the threshold where advanced gaming, 3D rendering, 4K displays, and 4G LTE are continuing to push us into a more powerful and more connected future. What idea would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your ideas at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch my last video, and if you'd like to support my show, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.